There is still time to correct this most grievous misunderstanding, Mr. Carter. The dagger of Amman Ra must be returned to Egypt. Stay out of my way, or I'll thrash you within an inch of your life. Surely you can find a way to accommodate everybody's wishes. Who are you to tell me what I can do with my own property? Your property? What authority do you have? The authority of the Egyptian Antiquities Service. So if you don't like it, I suggest you waddle on back to Egypt and complain to your own government. Would it not be better to work this out diplomatically? This isn't a case for diplomacy. It's a case for your acceptance of the situation. It is not just my acceptance at issue, Mr. Carter. Frankly, some of our people are quite upset. Move to take drastic measures if need be. Are you threatening me, you malodorous little man? Mr. Carter, there are some who would rather fight back than allow their country to be stripped of its national treasures. Any fat savage who lays a finger on my exhibit, or threatens me, will find himself in deep trouble. Do I make myself clear? As clear as the water of the oasis, Mr. Carter. Be careful with that steamer trunk, young man. It's exceedingly valuable. It sure is heavy, Mr. Carrington. You got gold bars in here or something? The contents of my trunk are not your concern. Now be a good lad and take it to my taxi. The Countess is waiting. New Orleans, one week later. Are you sure you've got everything? Yes, Daddy. You've got Sam's address at the paper? Yes, Daddy. You've got the money I gave you? Yes, Daddy. Don't worry. Put some money in your shoe. New York's a big city, and there's a lot of crime there. Look, I'm going straight to the paper. What could possibly go wrong? Let me give you a little more money, just in case. Dad, I've got to go. Godspeed, Laura. Call me as soon as you get there. I'll be fine, Dad. I'm going to make you proud of me. I already am, honey. Excuse me, dear, are you a secretary? Actually, I'm starting a new job as a reporter for the New York Daily Register News Tribune. My name's Laura Bow. How nice. I'm Ermgard. Is this your first trip to the big city? Am I that obvious? How could you tell? By the way, you keep glancing out the window, dear. I did the same thing the first time I came to New York. The tall buildings, the people rushing around, it was all so exciting. Then I stepped off the train and got mugged. How awful! It's the New York experience.
Thank you, dear. You're very kind. I've enjoyed traveling with you. Do you need any help getting home? No, dear. I'll be fine. Thank you. You're sure you'll be okay? Yes, thank you. Goodbye. Goodness gracious! My suitcase! Can you spare a dime, miss? Certainly, sir. I'm always ready to help those who are less fortunate. Well, that's just peachy. Give me all your money, then. Excuse me? Hand it over. This seems very unfair. Welcome to New York, kid. gonna let a little bad luck ruin my day. Hello, New York. Laura Bow has arrived. My destiny awaits. Nothing can stop me now. I really want to thank you for hiring me, Mr. Augustini. For hiring you? I don't even know who you are. I'm Laura Bow. I believe you know my father, John Bow. Ah, John Bow's daughter. Now I remember. How is he? He's fine, and he says hello. He wanted to know if you still had that newspaper clipping on your wall about the explosion of the Hindenburg building in New Orleans. Yes. Your father was the first cop on the scene of the explosion, and he let me into the wreckage so I could cover it for the paper. I rescued Rupert Hindenburg from his burning office, wrote about it, and made a name for myself as a reporter. I owe John a lot for that. Think you could handle being a reporter for a big city paper? I'll do my best, sir. We usually just hire men for this job. It's rough out there, and you're kind of small. I can do it, Mr. Augustini. Just give me a chance. All right, as a favor to my old pal, John. But I'll be keeping a close eye on you. Thank you, sir. For your first assignment, I want you to write about a burglary. Some kind of uh, fancy knife was stolen from the Lion Decca Museum. I'll arrange for you to attend the fundraiser at 7 o'clock tonight for their new Egyptian exhibit. Everyone will be there. Tell them you're covering the society news so they won't clam up on you. You won't regret it, sir. I have a nose for news. Just keep your nose out of trouble. Here's your official notebook and your pencil. It already has Crodfaller's notes in it. Have the story ready by three tomorrow, or you're out of a job. Act One, Laura Bow, A Nose for News. Laura Baines, right? Laura Bow, sir. And I believe you have the advantage. Crodfaller Rhubarb, ma'am. Though you can call me Rube. So I suppose you've already met Sam. Yes, he's very colorful. Don't let him shake you. He's tough on the outside, but inside he's got a heart of stone. I'm sure he... Pardon me? What did you say? Never mind. Just pulling your leg. Why don't you take this desk right here and we'll get you settled in. That's very kind of you. Mr. Augustini sort of left me on my own. I have to start on this story about a burglary at the Lion Decca Museum. And there we go. About 12 
minutes in, we finally get control of the game. Yeesh! That was a long introduction. Speaking of introductions, hello! I am Ragnats. Uh, this is the month of June, and we are doing another Low Bias Monthly. This month was decided by our very favorite Scarlet, of all the Scarlets we know and have. Uh, he's our favorite. <laughs> he chose Sierra Adventure Games, and I decided to go with this one. It's Laura Bow 2, The Dagger of Amon Ra. Uh, sequel to Laura Bow, The Colonel's Bequest, which I don't like as much as I like this one. I really do like this one. Uh, it's a lesser known Sierra title. I don't know if it's, a, it's the least known, but it's, it's definitely lesser known. Um, but gee whiz, it was it was tough deciding which which game I wanted to do for this month. I could have done this, which was really exciting to me. I could have done uh, King's Quest Three, which had a really awesome inventory management system with all the illegal items that you can't have when the wizard's around. Um, but man, you can die really easily in that game. Uh, I was considering doing Quest for Glory Four, but I kind of want to do. The Quest for Glory games in order, um, maybe around Halloween I'll I'll do some Quest for Glory stuff. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and uh, so I own this game. I actually own uh, all three of the games I just mentioned. Uh, this one and King's Quest Three are part of the Roberta Williams anthology that I have, uh, but. <laughs> the game, the CDs for that do not uh, work on Windows 10. Can't can't load up the setup. So I found a website that let me uh, use. Do well, it installed it for me and then set up DOSBox to make it all work. Um, and while looking at that, I was reminded of a whole bunch of other great Sierra titles like Goblins and well, Goblins because extra eyes. Uh, Freddy Farkas, Gabriel Knight, some really good stuff to to potentially play in a let's play like this. But we're going with this one because I played this with with my cousin back in the day, and we really enjoyed it. Though we were terrible at it, we had no idea what we were doing. But I'm older, I'm wiser, and now we're at almost 15 minutes and still haven't actually done anything. So let's 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 get this show on the road. So he said, go check out your desk, so let's check out our desk. This is now your desk. It's very old and looks like it hasn't been cleaned thoroughly in years, but it's sturdy and serviceable. The inside voice of Laura Bo has a bit of trouble with the S's and the P's. Sounds like she needed to take some mic lessons from, from Jason. Uh, by the way, some setting stuff. Uh, let's turn up the game speed, because... This game definitely is the least likely to die, since there are no jagged cliffs everywhere. Uh, I'll turn the details so it looks good. I think details just uh, increase the amount of incidental animation. Sure. Volume, we can leave the same. Text. Makes text around the same longer. Raise it if you're a fast reader. Well, we're not using text because we're in speech mode. Though, if you guys don't like speech mode, I can switch to text. Assuming, of course, uh, I take some breaks between recording, which I probably won't, so disregard all that. Okay, so we got our desk. This is the top drawer of your desk. It looks like an old desk blotter. It's the first pencil holder you've ever had as an official member of the Fourth Estate. Yeah, what do we have in our inventory? It's your official New York Daily Register News Tribune Reporter's Notebook with index tabs for people, places, and things. Um, now, the notebook's actually kind of a very neat mechanic on its own because when you look at your notebook, as, uh, as she said, people, places, and things, and miscellaneous, um, this keeps track of all the important names that you've ha uh, you've heard, all the important places, uh, every inventory item you've had, and various miscellaneous things. Now, touching them does nothing, and you can only 
and touch or exit. There's no other alternative. But it's very, very important for the conversation system. So let's open up our drawer. The desk drawer is locked. Let's not open up a drawer. You only find some lint under the desk blotter. That's not helpful. You only find some lint. Nope. You only find some lint under the desk blotter. We have officially screwed up physics at this point, because this <laughs> these things should be falling by now. You peel up a corner of the blotter to reveal a small key. Yaha. You pick it up and place it in your purse. So like most uh, CR games, you know, I just go in our inventory, pick it up. You unlock the drawer. Unfortunately, the key permanently jams itself in the lock. Let's hope you never want to lock this drawer again. A press pass. It reads, press. Your pants while you wait. Low Fats Chinese Laundry, 5858 Broadway Avenue, New York. You pick it up and place it in your purse. It doesn't sound like a standard press pass, but whatever. Alright. Now, uh, speaking of conversations and other things. So, our verb list. We have walk, look at, pick up slash touch. Uh, walk like an Egyptian. I have raw. Uh, I guess some sort of sideways hand. Even though it turns into a pointer finger out here. Uh, unlike most CR games, there are two different talk icons. Exclamation and question. In fact, we can use the help thing to differentiate them. So use this icon to talk to other characters in the game. Use this icon to ask questions of any of other characters in the game. You may ask anything, uh, ask about anything in your notebook. So let's first quickly talk to our neighbor here. I hope I'm not intruding. I mean, if you were working on the burglary story. Miss Bo, please, it is not a problem. Yes, I'd started work on the story, but it's not your fault that it's been reassigned. That's just something I'll have to take up with Sam. Thank you, Mr. Crod. I mean, Rube. Sounds a little salty about that. But now if we do this, it brings up our notebook and we can ask him about stuff in the notebook. And because most of these notes are his, in fact, let's ask him about the notebook first. What should I do with this notebook? You're a reporter, for heaven's sake. Surely you know to take notes. But why does it have all these notes all read in it? Because that was my notebook, and I was taking notes in it for the burglary investigation. It's your notebook now, and I don't care to discuss it anymore. Salty. Uh, actually, before we talk to him more, let's just check out our trash can. You find a curiously heavy object in the trash. Curiously heavy. You pick it up and place it in your purse. Right. Now it's asking about everything. Uh, I will mute the mic so you can just listen to the conversations. What can you tell me about Sam? He's a perfectionist. I badmouth him now and then, but, well, he's given me plenty of breaks, so I owe him a few. What can you tell me about this Pippin Carter character? A queer bird, if ever I've met one. Kinda comes across as cultured, yet he's a loudmouth, you know what I mean? He's got a chip on his shoulder the size of the Brooklyn Bridge. He'll try to cut you down, just shake it off. That's what I had to do. What should I know about Archibald Carrington? Carrington hasn't been in the States long. He's from England, but somehow he doesn't quite come off on the level. Call me stupid, but I just think the guy should be more concerned about museum property vanishing. His first month on the job, too. Have you dealt with Detective O'Reilly? I know he's assigned to the case. I didn't get anything out of him. Maybe you'll have better luck being a lady and all. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Rhubarb. 
what's to tell? I'm a reporter for this paper, probably since before you were born. But I want to know about the real crowdfaller T. Rhubarb. You mean there's another crowdfaller T. Rhubarb? No two sets of parents could be that cruel. That's okay, Mr. Crowdfaller. You don't have to tell me about yourself if you don't want to. Rube. Who are you calling a... Oh, Rube's your nickname, isn't it? Sorry, I forgot. Tell me about Low Fat. The old laundry guy? What's to tell? Have you heard the name John Bow? Don't think so. He a relative of yours? He's my father. Oh, Sam's friend. Never met him, I'm afraid. Is there anything I should know about working here at the New York Daily Register News Tribune? Well, first of all, we call it the Trib. No need to use the whole name. I don't think anyone in New York even remembers the whole shebang. Second, don't worry about Sam. He's gruff and loud, but he's really a cream puff. Don't let him push you around. Lastly, don't get too attached to any one assignment. You never know when it'll be yanked away from you and given to some less experienced reporter with no qualifications except an in with the boss. Ahem. <coughs> Sorry, didn't mean to get peevish. Salty. Anything I should know about the police station? Well, it's usually a good source of information. It's standard procedure to check there at some point in any investigation. Sometimes they just blow smoke at you, you know, hand you the commissioner's party line. But once in a while, they'll give you something you can actually use. What can you tell me about low fats? It's a place to take your laundry. That's about it, as far as I know. Give me the lowdown on the 12th Street docks. Low down. You've been reading too much pulp fiction. The docks are the docks. Keep away from them unless you have business there. Is there anything I should know about the Lion Decker Museum? Yeah, I went down there. I did get that far in the investigation, at least. I met the museum's president, a stodgy old croaker named Archibald Carrington III cagey guy didn't seem overly concerned about the dagger. You might see if you can get a little bit more out of him. I also spoke with a Pippin Carter. Nasty little squirt. He acts like the world owes him a living. Apparently he's the one who's originally discovered the dagger in Egypt, along with some of the other junk in the exhibit. Now he was hot about the dagger. Took the whole thing like it was a personal stab at him. No pun intended. Now, what's the scoop on the flower shop? You mean the speakeasy? The flower shop's just a cover. Look for a fellow there named of Ziggy. He knows a lot and tends to talk too much. Any advice for somebody who's brand new to the city? Well, keep your eyes off the tall buildings. That's how muggers spot you. Don't leave your luggage alone for a moment, or somebody will walk off with it. And if you travel anywhere, be sure to put some money in your shoe, just in case. <sighs> Where can I find this speakeasy? Just ask any cab driver. They'll take you there. It's the place disguised as a flower shop. Who 
is Ziggy? He's what we politely call a stool pigeon. Basically, the guy squeals for cash. Amazing that the guy hasn't had his neck broken by now. What is this? I'm not sure. Hand it to me and I'll take a closer look at it. Oh, this is what we call a press pass. Very useful. We ran out of official press passes. This is a business card for low fats, but if you wave it in front of a cabbie, it'll take you where you want to go. I found this baseball in the trash. What should I do with it? Keep it, I guess, or give it away. The sports writer who sat at your desk only had about 50 souvenir baseballs. I have a feeling 1926 is going to be a great year, don't you? Yeah. You ever try writing obituaries for a living? <laughs> Hardly a jolly way to spend the year. Were you able to get any leads at all about the burglary at the museum? No, hadn't been working on the story very long. I went to see Detective O'Reilly down at the police station, but he was pretty tight-lipped. I was planning on talking to Ziggy down at the speakeasy. He's a stoolie, usually good for a tidbit or two. Any other leads I can follow up on? With due respect, ma'am, it's going to be your byline on the story. Not mine. Point taken, Mr. Crod for... Rube. Any wisdom you care to pass along about Egyptology? You've already proven to me you know as much about Egyptology as I do. Maybe more. I bow to your superior knowledge, Miss Bo. Thank you, sir. And that was that. That was a lot of talking. Uh, just do a couple more things and then we can call this a video. One notice reads, when covering formal events such as embassy parties, please dress appropriately. We've had complaints about reporters who refuse to dress properly at social events. That's an important hint. One of the notices reads, some of our employees have been asking for a 40-hour work week, as has been proposed by Mr. Henry Ford. This is not an automobile factory. This is a newspaper. News happens 24 hours a day, and we need to report it. One of the notices reads, stolen, one Victrola, reward offered, no retribution will be exacted. One of the notices reads, Dr. Darwin DeLoring will be hosting a symposium, Jazz, the Charleston, and Other Sins of Our Times, to be held in the cafeteria next Tuesday. All repentant souls are invited to attend. One notice reads, when covering formal events such as embassy parties, please dress appropriately. All right, so that is that. Oh, let's try checking out this room over here. You can't go in there. That's the men's lounge. You glance around curiously, but there's no sign of a ladies' lounge. This is patently unfair. Patently. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, so... Uh, out and about, there are two main ways to travel. We can use the taxis, or we can cross the street. However, hint, hint, if you try to cross the street, If you don't look both ways, you'll be dead in no time flat. 
So actually, there are no cars coming from this direction. There are no cars coming from this direction. So now that I've looked both ways, I can cross the street. And across the street from the Tribune is the police office. Yay! Or police station. Hi there, snoring guy. A man sleeping under a newspaper. Judging by the strong smell of alcohol, you deem it wise not to light a match in his presence. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Don't bother me, lady. I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. He snores in response. What a jerk. Alright. We'll take a look at the police station next time. Till then, folks. I'm playing a game! <laughs>